It's a new chapter in the age-old story of Man and the River, the Colorado River Storage Project, a basin-wide undertaking that calls for construction of four large mainstream dams and 11 irrigation units. Some 80 miles east of Four Corners, legendary gathering place of the Indian nations, work recently began on one of the key project structures on the San Juan River, Navajo Dam. And this is where it will stand, just downstream of a horseshoe bend in the river, a great earth-filled embankment measuring 3,800 feet at the crest. It will be the second largest dam of its type to be built by the Bureau of Reclamation. The total excavation, including spillway and outlet works over on the north walls of the canyon, will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 29 million cubic yards of earth and rock. Much of it, of course, must be taken from borrow areas, located up to four miles away. The construction crews will work three shifts. Obviously, night lights will be needed. And so will buildings to house and maintain equipment, as well as to store materials. This one is being erected right in the construction area. Downstream of the dam site, and reached via this modern highway, a brand new little community has sprouted almost overnight. Homes have been built, streets and utilities provided, and whatever else necessary has been provided to make life in the New Mexico wilderness more livable for the workforce, for the men who must bring Navajo Dam into being. The first construction machinery for the job, a fleet of tractor dozers and motor graders, was shipped halfway across the country from the manufacturer's plant at Springfield, Illinois, to start the earth-moving operation. The contracting companies jointly responsible for the success of the venture are Morrison Knudsen, Kaiser, and F&S. The time allowed by the Bureau of Reclamation for completion of the project is four years, eight months, and sooner if possible. The San Juan River, named after St. John the Baptist, is a peaceable enough stream most of the time, but it has its moods, some of them pretty violent, which is one of several very good reasons for building Navajo Dam in the first place. But the character of the river also had an important bearing on selection of the site, design of the structure, and programming the work. The early concentration of effort is on excavation for the spillway, a rugged earth-moving assignment being carried out 400 or more feet above the riverbed, high atop the canyon walls. Only heavy-duty equipment could cope with the problem of moving the stubborn rocks and boulders, the dry, crusted earth typically found in this part of the southwest. These are Alice Chalmers HD-21 tractor dozers, working singly and in pairs as the particular task may require. They weigh in at about 28 tons and are well suited to team operation by virtue of a torque converter drive. With excavation proceeding on a round-the-clock basis, surveyors must work well ahead of men and machines, staking out the contours of the spillway, which is to be of the chute type, with a capacity of 34,000 cubic feet of water per second. Completed, the spillway will be 1,410 feet long by 138 feet wide at the crest and 195 feet wide at the stilling basin below. They call the Colorado River Storage Project a project for people, not only for the benefits it will bring to the immediate four state area served, but for its more general effects that will be felt throughout the nation in transforming a wasteland into a valued part of our total economy. 
When it's finally in place, Navajo Dam will create a clear water reservoir 34 miles long and 4 to 5 miles wide for effectively utilizing New Mexico's share of the upper Colorado River watershed. Among other things, it will supply water for irrigating more than 110,000 acres of new land, most of it on the Navajo Indian Reservation. And, in addition, it will encourage new industries along with development of the area's rich mineral resources. Downstream from here is where the finished structure will stand. The spillway will cut through the canyon walls on the right flank. Two diversion tunnels will be punched through this mountain of rock. Before the actual drilling of the tunnels can begin, the site must be cleared of loose rock and dirt, and some that is not so loose. Altogether, some 40,000 yards of it will be stripped from the canyon wall and used as fill in the first stage of the dam construction. Handling the task here is a 33-ton tractor shovel equipped with a four-yard rock bucket. For breaking new trail upon one of Mother Nature's more challenging obstacle courses, the sure-footed tractor dozer is just the thing to move stubborn rock and stumps. What the tractor dozers don't shove out of the way by brute force, the blasting crew knocks out of the way. First, of course, drilling the holes to plant the charges, which is what they're doing here. But after the explosion has jolted the big rocks and boulders loose, the tractor dozers still have to move in for the cleanup detail. The main diversion tunnel, which will be drilled at three feet below normal river level, is less of a problem in the preliminaries than the smaller auxiliary tunnel, which will be driven 43 feet higher. When they're completed, a coffer dam will turn the flow into the 1,650 foot long tunnels through the mountain and back to the riverbed downstream. Then, without the river to contend with, 26 million cubic yards of earth fill from this and other borrow areas can be moved in. All of it watered down for a prescribed 20 days for proper moisture content. Till finally, Navajo Dam rises to its full majestic height. At this point, 388 feet above the riverbed, tall as a 40-story building. It will cost an estimated $42 million, but it will be one of the mightiest works of man, bringing long-awaited civilization and progress to a last frontier in the great new American West.